Okay, here we are at the last lesson of Algebra 1A Credit 1. It's lesson 2.3. And lesson 2.3, uh, we're going to be solving for a variable in a formula. And um, it sounds a little more complicated than it is. And, well, let's jump right into it. You'll see. So uh, we're going to be on page 42 to start, the very bottom of the page, uh, problem number one. So this is P equals... MGH, and we want to solve for M. So the important thing is, is always uh, what's going to be next to the equation is the variable, because they have to tell you what variable to solve for, um, is going to be the variable they want you to solve for, which in this case is M. All right, well, M is being multiplied by G and H, um, so we need to get rid of the G and the H, so it's all multiplication, so we just divide by G and H to both sides. And they could have asked you to solve for any of these variables as well, too, but they chose M for this one. All right, so the G's and the H cancel out, so we just have M equals P over G H. We like to turn that around usually and write it nicely, so we'll say M equals Again, P over G, and that's it. So this one was just a one-stepper. Uh, we could do that in just one step. And uh, likewise with this next one here. Now, number two, also at the bottom of page 42 there, is the formula for circumference of a circle. Now, you don't have to know that, but it is makes it a little more relevant or interesting if, if you do spot or recognize some of these formulas. So number two, they're asking us to solve for R. So r is being multiplied by 2 and pi, so we're going to divide by 2 pi to both sides. And we get the circumference over 2 pi, or c over 2 pi, and the 2's cancel, the pi's cancel, equals r. And then again, just so it looks nice, we're going to turn that around and just write c, r equals c over 2 pi. And that's it. So that is number 2. All right, moving along. Uh, turning the page to page 43, and we're going to be in the middle of the page, and they want us to solve for B in this next one. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is problem number three over on page 43. So we get V equals um, B times H divided by 3, and this is another... Um, uh, this is actually a volume formula for geometry. Uh, but in this case, we're solving for B. All right, so we have to just remember and keep focus. We're solving for B here. Now, whenever you have a fraction, the first thing you want to do is get rid of that fraction. So, because <clears throat> we know we're going to have to, you know, to solve for B, we're going to have to get rid of that H. But before we do that, we're going to have to get rid of this divide by 3. And that's easy to do. We just multiply by 3 to both sides. So on the left side, we've got 3V. Then over here, since this is a fraction, you can make 3 a fraction by putting it over 1. 3s cancel. And you've got V times H. Well, again, keeping in mind what we're solving for here is V. So I always want to keep that in mind. Uh, so since we're solving for V, we want V by itself. We've got to get rid of the H. We have B times H, so we're going to do the opposite, which is divide. And we get 3B over H equals B. And again, that's fine. You can leave it like that, but it looks nicer if you kind of turn things around. And so we have B equals 3B over H. All right, let's go to number four, which is right next to it. And uh, we have another geometry formula here. This one's... Uh, area of a triangle. Uh, so area is equal to base times height divided by 2. And on this one, they want us to solve for H. So you might ask, like, well, when would we, why are we doing this? Or when would we learn this? Or why do we learn this? Um, so if you had a situation where you had, uh, you weren't trying to find the area, but you had the base in the area and you wanted to solve for the height, Instead of manipulating these equations for every single problem, you can just solve it once for height and then plug in to find, um, you know, plug in, the, they give you the area in the base and um, be able to work it out like that. 
All right, so let's work this out. We're dividing by two, so we multiply by two to both sides. So we've got 2a equals, and again, the twos cancel out, so b times h. We're trying to solve for h. h is being multiplied by b. So notice this time we're solving for the, it was the first variable, and it really doesn't matter, but again, it's not always the first one here. It's the h, the second one. So we're dividing by b this time. We want h by itself. So the b's cancel, and we get 2a over b equals h. And again, turning that around so it looks nice. A or excuse me, H equals 2A over B. So 2A over B. All right. Now at the very bottom of that page, we've got two more. And they look similar. Uh, but what's different on these is we're going to be solving for a variable that's in the, a denominator. So that's going to um, still using similar or the same rules. Um, but um, let's go over this. So number five, we've got S equals V over T, and we're solving for T. So we're solving for the variable in the denominator, which is T, uh, but our, our first step is still the same. We want to get rid of the fraction. So we multiply by what's in the denominator, which is T, to both sides. And again, if it helps, make the T a fraction on the fraction side of it. All right, so we've got Ts or T times S, and over here the Ts cancel out. So we have a bunch of ones, so just V is left over here. Now remember, you're not solving for V. If you were solving for D, that'd be great. You'd be done. But we're solving for T. So again, let's keep our focus on that. And so T is being multiplied by S, so we divide by S, and we get T equals V over S. So that is number five. So let's do number six now. Number six is another one uh, very, very similar to what we just did there in number five. So we got E equals F over Q. And, yep, that's correct. And then uh, we're solving for Q. So we're solving, again, we're solving for the variable in the denominator. But same first step. We want to get rid of that fraction. So since Q is in the denominator, so notice... We're multiplying by Q, not because we're solving for Q, but again, because that's what's in the denominator, which just coincidentally happens to be what we're trying to solve for. So we multiply Q to both sides, and we got Q times E, the Q over 1 if it helps. Qs cancel out, and so just F is left over there. Again, we're solving for Q. We always want to look back at that so we don't forget that. So Q is being multiplied by E, so we divide by E to both sides, and we get Q equals F over E. And that is number six. All right, so now flipping the page to page 44, and we're going to do some more. And just, um, just looking at several problems that are in different formats, so we just get a good feel and understanding of how to do this. So on page 44, we're at the bottom of the page, uh, number 7, and we get uh, we get this. We get E equals, not MC squared, not the relativity, relativity formula, but uh, E equals 1 half MB squared. So it's kind of, kind of the same thing, actually, isn't it? All right, anyways, all right, so let's... Keep in mind what we're solving for here. We're solving for M. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is we do have a fraction here, and then just the one half here. So um, we all, we want to get we have the fraction here, so we want to get rid of the two. So we're going to multiply by two to both sides. So we got two e, and again the twos cancel out here. So notice what we have here, just a bunch of ones here. So we don't need that. It would just be one MV squared. So it's just um, MV squared. That's it. We don't need, again, this is just one times one, one times one. So that's just one there. Okay, keeping in mind that we're solving for M. So we have to get rid of V squared. Now, fortunately, there's not much we have to do here other than divide by V squared, because that's what we're trying to get rid of. And we get 2e over v squared equals m. And again, turning that around and making it look nice, we get m equals 2e over v squared. 2e over v squared. 
Okay, uh, that is number seven. Now, number eight, um, well, let's take a look at number eight here. We've got y equals three plus two x plus five. We want to solve for, uh, well, obviously it'll be x because y is already solved for and x is the only other variable. So we're going to solve for x. So on this one, what's different on this one um, is that we have some like terms. We can kind of condense the equation. When you we combine, whenever we combine like terms, we can just think of that as condensing or making the equation smaller. So we have two constant terms here on the same side of the equal sign. So we can add those up. 3 plus 5 is 8. So that, um, not only do we kind of have to do that, we want to do that because that makes the equation uh, uh, more condensed and easier to deal with. All right, so we're solving for x. <clears throat> so we need to get rid of this 8. So we're going to subtract 8 to both sides, and we got y minus 8. And you might wonder why I write this out here, because these aren't like terms. So we just kind of, usually we line up like terms, like the constant terms here. So I just do that to show that that's, those are not like terms. So the 8's cancel, we get 2x. And again, we're solving for x, so x is being multiplied by 2. Now, even though that was no other variable, sometimes we forget what we're solving for. And I've seen people do this. They'll just go right back, just like we subtracted the 8. They'll think we're solving for y, because we're so used to doing that, like with slope-intercept form and all that. And so they'll just add 8 to solve for y. But remember, we're solving for x. x is being multiplied by 2, so we divide by 2 to both sides. And we get y minus 8 over 2, 2 is canceled, so equals x. And yes, again, we're going to make it look nice, turn it around. We get x equals y minus 8 over 2. So that is it for number 8. All right, turning the page to number 40, uh, page 45. And uh, actually, this is our last two problems, so we're almost done here. All right, so we're going to look at... Making sure we didn't miss anything. Yeah, we're good with that. So at the bottom of 45, we're going to take a look at problems 9 and 10. All right, so problems 9 and 10, we've got uh, number 9 we, is uh, z equals 5 over y minus 2. And then, and again, you can pretty much guess what they're going to ask you to solve for here because z is already solved for us. So they're going to the only other variable is y, so we're going to solve for y. All right. Well, again, remember we said earlier, whenever we have a fraction, we want to get rid of that fraction first. Uh, what's different here is we got a little bit more than just a single variable or a single number in the fraction, so or in the denominator, I should say. So 5 is being divided by y minus 2, so we multiply by y minus 2 to both sides. And so make that a fraction if that helps. So we've got uh, y minus 2 times z. Then over here, the y minus 2s cancel out, and so we have 5 over 1, which is just 5. Now, we're solving for y. Now, what looks weird here is that y is inside the parentheses. So we need to kind of bring it outside the parentheses, if you will, or kind of unlock it, if you will. And we do that by distributing the z. So we got y times z, and then we've got... Um, z times negative, or negative 2 times z, which would be negative 2z, and equals 5 here. Now that looks, you might say, well, gosh, that looks more of a mess than this does here. Well, it does. I'll agree with you there. But again, we need to do that so we can get y by itself. So put a little arrow there just to remind us that we're solving for y. So if we're trying to solve for y, but this is the term with the y in it, so we have to get rid of this term, the whole term, not just the negative 2. So we're going to add 2z to both sides. And again, these are not like terms over here. That's a constant. That's a variable term. So that's why we're writing them kind of offset like that. And we bring down the yz. And then over here, we have 5 plus 2z. So again, we can't combine those. That It's not 7z because that's a, very, that's a z term and that's a constant term. Well, we're almost done. We're trying to solve for y, remember. And the only thing that's... In our way is this z that's being multiplied to the y. So we just divide by z to both sides. And we get y equals 5 plus 2z over z. And that's it. That's all you do. Let's make that look a little bit nicer. And so that is it for number 9. 
All right, so let's take a look at our last, I said that, I want to be sure, yeah, our last problem here, this is number 10, here on page 45, and we've got y equals 3 over x minus 2, and we want to solve for x. And again, obviously, because there's only two variables and y is already by itself, so it's got to be x. All right, so in this one, you say, oh, I, I get it now. I need to multiply by x to both sides. And we do, but before we do that, you say, wait, I thought that, you said that was the first thing we do. Well, true, but this is the first time that we've had something beside a fraction there. And so before we multiply by x, we want to get rid of that uh, minus 2 there, just so the fraction term is by itself, and then we'll multiply by x to both sides. So to get rid of this minus 2, we're going to add 2 to both sides. And again, the y and the 2 are not like terms, so we offset them. So we've got y plus 2, again, just to indicate that we can't combine them. Those cancel out, and we have 3 over x here. Now, um, we can get rid of our fraction. And what's in the denominator? The x. So we're going to multiply by x to both sides. Now, since we're multiplying x to everything here, we now have to put the y plus 2 in parentheses. All right, so now on the left side here, we've got x times y plus 2. And then over here, the x is canceled. We just have 3 over 1, which is just 3. All right, now you might um, say, oh, I know what we do next. I can look at this problem here, for, or look at the last problem. And you're, you might be thinking you distribute here. And actually you don't. Because again, we always want to keep in mind the variable you're solving for, which in this case was x. And again, you might be frustrated at this point and say, well, wait a second. I thought you said if you have a variable next to parentheses, you have to distribute because you've got to unlock what's inside. Yes, if you're solving for the variable that's inside. Remember on this one here, we were solving for y, and y was inside the parentheses, so we needed to distribute so we could start getting y by itself. But notice on this one, we're solving for x. x is outside the parentheses. x is being multiplied to the y plus 2, so actually this is a lot easier. One more step and we're done. We just divide by y plus 2 to both sides, and of course the y plus 2 is canceled, giving us what we want. x is by itself, and then we've got... 3 over y plus 2. x equals 3 over y plus 2, and that's it. So again, I, I, the rules, if, if, you, if you think about it and you watch it again, it does all make sense. It's not like, oh, you're making exceptions. Um, we're not because it is a slightly different situation. So even though it looks a little similar because you had the letter next to parentheses, the, the, letter, the variable next to parentheses, again, the difference was here we were solving for a variable inside parentheses, so that's why we had to distribute. But here it was actually nicer because we're solving the, the variable outside the parentheses, outside these parentheses. And so all we had to do is divide by this, the y plus 2, and we were done. So again, if it doesn't quite make sense, watch the videos again, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and, it, and it should make sense and you'll get it. All right, so the homework and lesson checkpoint are pages 40. Um, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, 46 through 47, that's it, right? Yes, 46 and 47. Okay, put it up here. Does that show on the screen? Barely, yes, it does. So pages 46 and 47, and uh, that's it. So after that will be the credit checkpoint, and you will have uh, this packet completed. So good job, and good luck with the homework and lesson checkpoint.